10,825 pounds as we see it here today. And don't call it a bunkhouse because it's so much more than that. My name is Josh the RV Nerd. Welcome to Halo RV. And this is the Arctic Wolf 3770 Suite. And I consider it first and foremost a two bedroom, uh, like European rolling efficiency apartment where you've got bedrooms and bathrooms on both ends of the RV with a shared middle living space. But it's like it doubles up on everything. We've got double air conditioning, we've got uh, double bedrooms, we've got two queen beds in the back plus a king bed up front. We've got a five seat recliner super party couch going on in the living room with a pair of hideaway dining tables. So you have double Dinofa action going on. This thing it has two two refrigerators. <laughs> it's it's this thing is awesome. The only thing it is not is short, but it's shockingly light for its size. I think this is a really good fit for a lot of like three quarter ton uh, type people out there. Uh, it's definitely, I, I feel very strongly beyond the realm of half ton towability. So let's just kind of wipe that off the slate. But this thing is really cool. They, they took a concept, I think really originally pioneered by the Cougar 364 BHL, which we also have available at Halid RV. But they, they tweaked it around a little bit. They gave it washer dryer prep. They gave it a king bed slide. And I love what they did in the rear room. I would say the rear bedroom on this is very conducive to converting into an office, but when we get upstairs into that bedroom, you're gonna see you don't need to because they already have an office space standardized in these ones now as of the 22 generation. Obviously, you can tell I'm all pumped up on this thing, and I'm quitting caffeine right now. So this ain't even just the Mountain Dew talking, although it could be a couple marshmallows. You get the idea. My point is this is an awesome RV. I'm very sweet on it. I acknowledge though, there's a couple little areas. I think they could do some things better. I'm gonna point that out as we go. And I'd love to get that feedback from you. As always, leave me some comments. Let me know, where do you think they nailed it? Where do you think they failed it? And I swear, my biggest problem with this model is I never know where to start because it's like everywhere I look, it's another conversation piece around this thing. So I, I gotta start somewhere. I think I'm gonna just start over here, like in the, the living room slide. On the way, I wanna point out the main flooring is carpetless and bentless. You do notice there's a little strip of carpet there for the slide. I think that's something a lot of people would eventually like to see swapped out. Um, it, it's definitely on Arctic's radar having spoken with them. Um, they just, they, they have a lot going on. They haven't been able to accomplish something like that right now. Now, if you're looking at this, it's got just panoramic window coverage, but if we're going to be critical, we could say that the windows are arguably on the wrong side of the RV. That's just kind of a necessity because this big living room super slide is so much larger than the kitchen slide. You can't just flip flop the model. But I don't know. I think I think this one makes it work. There's there's so much space in this one. Like, and I I, I love this thing. Like, let's start right down here. Take a look at this. And this is one of the biggest symptoms to me. They're like Arctic Wolf when they first came out. Their big claim to fame is that we make the floor plans other people make, we just make them cheaper. And since then, Arctic Wolf ha has really kind of come into their own, and they've developed these new, fresh ideas. People are, there's a lot of people like, man, I hate dinettes, I don't like dinettes. They said, no sweat. We're going to come out with this big five-seat recliner party super sofa right here. But if you are curious, you might go, yeah, but <laughs> where do I eat? Well, don't you worry your pretty little head because Arctic Wolf comes with a baby got back double Dinofa so you can uh, double up uh, uh, and have not one but two of these fold out tables. So you can pull out one if you need to. You can pull them both out if you need to. You can turn the whole thing into one giant seating situation and you can still walk between the countertop and the table as you see right here. Or something else you can do, get a couple little fold away stools that you like keep under the bed and you can turn that into like a four seater and then you can turn the other one into a four seater and you can have like an eight seat situation game day bucket go boom kind of like draft camping extravaganza. I think you get the idea. There's two tables. Well, here's another reason. I love the game day bucket go boom baby got back double Dinofa whip crack uh, sound table arrangements. Patent pending, probably. I don't know. Nothing says you have to use them just in front of the sofas. You you could put, maybe squeeze one back in the in front of the bed in the bunk room that we're going to see. You could use one outside. You could use one inside. You could leave them at home. You could use one in the front awning, one in the back. There's just, there's no rules that says this is how you have to use them. They're just there. And that's something that I like when I'm camping. I like it when one thing can do multiple things because 
sometimes when you're camping, man, you go on the adventure and sometimes the adventure just kind of takes you with it. Now we were getting a sweet flood of light from those panoramic windows, but it was kind of fighting the camera a little bit here. And I thought, hey, what a perfect opportunity to demonstrate and to showcase the, uh, the Hipmo shades, the zebra roller shades that these come with. Some people like them, some people hate them. Here's what I'll tell you. If you really, really, really don't like these, they can be exchanged. That's what I call screwdriver work. If you want a wall moved, you're looking at the wrong RV. If you just want a window treatment kind of tweaked around, that's just not big deal stuff. We can assist you with that. So the way these work, um, and if you're sensitive to like flashing light, you actually might want to maybe close your eyes for a second. Um, some people really kind of like these. I, I think they look very hypnotic and very cool. They're not everyone's cup of tea. And something you're going to find from us is I'm always trying to provide brutally honest information. Sometimes when it's detrimental to the sale of the RV, like the fact that that window doesn't open for airflow and its partner in crime on the other side of the slide also does not open for airflow. That being said, I think most of the time in an RV like this, people are probably going to be running the double ducted factory 30,000 BTU air system, but to each their own. I just wanna give you the information to help you make a better, more educated decision. Um, man, there's a lot going on in the kitchen that we haven't even begun to touch on yet. I'm sorry, this my videos run long, but this is a big RV with a lot of stuff. I think we'll come back to hit the kitchen from the other direction when I got a better shot at it. One thing I do want to do, though, let's say you're over here on seats one, two, and three in the super recliner party couch without the baby got back double Dinofa in your face. That is an easy viewing entertainment center right there above that electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster. Household and USB outlets all over. Actually, there's a set of USB outlets directly behind us right now as we're looking, just to kind of share that info. Now, from the factory, this actually does not include a TV because we found that we can get you a bigger or a better TV for the same or less money uh, from the factory. So a lot of people also have plenty of TVs laying around the house now. Now, this room back here is, I've, 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 I think hit on a, a bunch of very cool features in this RV so far, but we haven't even really begun to scratch the surface of what I think is its best quality. And that is this rear room back here. So basically what you've got is effectively a, a pair of queen beds back here. Uh, it is uh, not, again, it's not your father's bunkhouse. I like how over here we've got that handy wide open side standing in household and USB outlets. You see there's uh, some cool little storage cubbies both below the foot of the bed as well as beside, but we've also got some pretty slick storage space going on over here. And I mean, that is big. That is big. Uh, hey phone, how, how much storage is in there? That's a crap ton. Yeah, it's a big crap ton of storage. <laughs> well, there you go guys. Siri says it's a crap ton. Um, <laughs> but I love this back here. Again, it's it's more than just a bunkhouse. It's a whole second bedroom. It's a, it's a second entertainment lounge. It just does all kinds of things. You have these huge window spaces. Again, you've got that storage uh, down here below the foot of the bed. And if I slide backwards actually into the half bath that we'll see in a minute, you saw that ladder was kind of just leaned against the wall. Um, I had it just sort of hooked up on the mattress up there. That's not really what it's going to do. If I take you all the way upstairs here, you see that this is the same size bed that we had downstairs. This is another big giant like queen bed. Note the outlets up there in that upper corner. I think that this could be like the big kids bed, uh, but actually even if it is little kids, you've got the built-in almost like wrought iron kind of, uh, you know, rail here to keep the kids from flopping out of the bed. Plus it's adult size. And in case you're curious, it says right over there, 300 pound rated. If you're in the lower bed, here's what that's gonna look like up there. This is really the angle I think I should have given you. Sorry for the extra crappy camera work crappier than normal. Now again, this is a bath and a half model. This is a direct entry half bath, but remember you've got a deadbolt right there and that's all you gotta do to make sure that you don't have an awkward situation with somebody coming in here and surprising you. Now this is a good adult sized half bath as well. And you do have a sliding pocket privacy door over here. Um, you might notice that's a porcelain bowl. It's a sealed edge counter. It's a simple plastic sink. It's a little small. It's just big enough for adult hands. I think this will be a, a good kiddo kind of place for them to be able to brush their teeth. But notice that remote control right there. If we start looking all the way up, and I'm going to try to do it slow to not make you sick, we see a rain-sensing Max Air style vent fan. 
that's what that remote control is going to activate so that you get some nice good airflow in here which is a room i think a lot of people would agree you probably need it and if there's one criticism i have for this half bath it's this right here i this is the view <laughs> from the toilet um I guess if you need to use the bathroom and you need to keep an eye on your kids or your campsite, this is pretty cool. I, I, I feel a little exposed. Now, during the day, the, the, you'll see from the outside, there's no way that you can see through this. At night when it's backlit, you can see through it, however. And this is one of the areas that both of the entry doors are shade ready. But I, I talk about this all the time. Cherokee, please. If there's one place you're just going to give us a factory shade, please do it here in the bathroom. And again, folks, if you're weirded out about that, give us a call here at Halid RV. That's an easy thing for us to do before you take it home. Now, as we come out of that rear, again, I'm not going to call it bunk room. I'm going to call it bedroom. I do want to show off the fact that you do have some LED accent lights in here. They're above the slide, uh, above that little ceiling light fixture, as well as over here in the kitchen island itself. I'm personally, I'm, I'm over the uh, RV Labatt blue light phase. I, I would really like it if they were just a white light. I don't think they cost anymore. Um, I would love some feedback on that, though, that we could give to the factory. Do you like the blue lights? I mean, they match the outside for sure. At least they are kind of decor matching. I'll give them that. But do you like the blue? Would you just prefer a white? Is there some other color? Like, what would you like to see there if you were buying this? And as promised, we'll finally get to the kitchen here. Um, one of the things I want to show you is behind the, the right-hand pantry door, there's some stuff, some system stuff they don't want you putting cargo there. That left-hand spot, though, I think that could be a decent wastebasket space. There's maybe some, you know, there's actually probably some better opportunities for a wastebasket once we get into the uh, island. And I, I tell you, sometimes it doesn't have to be much. Just the little trim work that they did up there, giving it almost like a little bit of a, a barn kind of theme and feel. They could have just left that wall blank. It would have been okay, but I like that they did something with it. And I don't think we've really talked about that ceiling fan up there, but it is nice to be able to get some airflow cycling around. Um, working our way over here, the uh, outlets are very easy to reach, and that's a tricky thing to sometimes do inside of a laminated slide wall like that. So. Uh, absolutely, you know, hats off to them and credit there. It's a small oven, but it's a bigger drawer. So everything's going to be a bit of a push and a pull here. And one of the things I love to point out on these is the fact that that cutting board, they call it a cutting board backsplash. I call it a side splash. I think that that's where the magnets should be located over here next to that 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Because personally, I think that gives us a, a, a more functional thing, not to mention, you know, just with magnet holdbacks, you can take it off, you can defend yourself from ninjas if they invade your campsite at night. Plus, we've still got storage in the island we haven't seen yet, and something that's easy to miss on the sides of the island, you have household and USB plugs here. And we've teleported the opposite side of the island here. This floor plan, I always am forced to jump around a little bit more than normal. But I wanted you to see not just the plywood drawers, but that there are household outlets on both sides. And this is awesome. When you're using the sink, there's still countertop space available. Not to mention the space that we saw over there beside the oven, which is kind of cool. Black skirted uh, or black stainless skirted sink. And this is where I'm saying I think that's obviously the best place for a, a wastebasket. Now, you hear me talk a lot about it when we go outside, but Arctic Wolf is actually really consistent on a lot of things. When they find something that works, they copy and paste, copy and paste it all day long. Like this bathroom is almost the exact same bathroom that you find in nearly all of the bed slide suite models. You'll have the same, uh, virtually same at least, you know, leg room, toilet situation, 30 by 36 inch shower over here that is about six and a half foot tall. So people like me can actually fit in there. And the big XL vent fan up here, which uh, just like we had in the half bath. Again, when they use a fan, they just use the good big one. That's what I like about Arctics. You can definitely argue there's a fancier one here or there. But the stuff that you're going to use every day, they nail it. Now we had a look from the sofa. We had a look from the uh, lower queen bed in the rear bedroom. I guess you could call it bunker, I call it bedroom, whatever, you get the idea. This is the view from the king bed in the master room right here. And one of the reasons I want to do this is to show you what's behind the wall. Like, this is what's behind the shower in the uh, bathroom space there. It's an extra closet space, but if you notice, this is also where they put 
the washer dryer hookups. Now, there, it's like there's shoe garage space, something else I like. Uh, there's extra floor space right there. So you have a place to kind of stand up privately and get dressed without necessarily putting on a, a free show for the neighbors. Great space up here if you want to add a TV to your bedroom. Uh, you might notice that we've got a factory installed standard second 15,000 BTU air conditioner. I referred to this earlier as a 30,000 BTU air system. That's because this RV has dual factory 15,000 Coleman quieter uh, air conditioners. And then over here, where everybody else is going to put their uh, washer dryer prep, Arctic Wolf said, what if we did it different? And what if we standardized this? What if we did this on like all of our bed slide models? What if we built like a little office desk corner space in here? And what's nice is it doesn't require you to modify the second bedroom or the bunkhouse. You don't have to tear stuff up. You don't have to trash your resale value. You just add a chair and a laptop or whatever. You got household USB outlets. You got anything you need. You could always turn it into a little personal vanity station. And then up front here, you have that, uh, you know, kind of double sliding door closet thing going on. Because on the left side over here, you slide those out of the way, you've got like a big, deep, additional dresser space. And in case you're kind of curious, like, what is that thing I'm looking at? There's household and USB outlets tucked away inside there. Now, I get that the household and USB outlets on this model, they're a little bit far away from the bed. So for uh, our CPAP breathing machine using friends, I have an idea for you. Uh, here's a little picture, and uh, I'll try to remember to leave you a link in the video description for these little wing-out side stands that you can put over here beside this, I, I believe, by the way, 72 by 80 uh, king bed, something that's actually fairly easy to find uh, sheets for. That's something that you can do on this if you need it, or any RV, really, not just this one. You might not even realize those exist. They just tuck under the mattress, and they give you a little side stand, and maybe you just want it for a place to set your phone. You don't have to have a CPAP machine to need one of those things, or to maybe want one. Now, look at her here in road mode, the slides closed, with the hallway being over here on the door side. Upper decker nap and crap access is... Uh, really not a concern that that's you know you can always get up here the thing that you wonder about is what happens when we get down to the lower deck in the living room area and with opposing slides and an island unfortunately you just pretty much pinch this thing off there's not a whole lot you can do to get in here like you, you do lose this refrigerator access you do have access to the outside fridge and transit but remember this refrigerator is 12 volt that refrigerator is 110, so it actually is not powered in transit unless you choose to add some kind of inverter. The reason I'm walking you outside right now is because you do still maintain access to the rear bedroom and bathroom as well. So this is actually double nap and crap certified, which I don't know if I've ever really overtly uh, uh, noticed that on an RV before. So if you need to get back here without touching the slides, like you've been on the road all day and it's like, all right, everybody just go lay down. Here's your McDonald's, here's your Wendy's or something for the night. Get in your bed, sleep it off. We're gonna hit this in the morning and finish our trip. That you can do with this one. And ever since their inception, I have always felt Arctic Wolves, if they were good for one thing, it was for all of the curb appeal. But in these recent years, they've toned it down a little bit, but I think really maintained that kind of eye catchy, like, ooh, look at that over there. They're just not as loud about it anymore. It's like the brand is maturing before our eyes, which is kind of cool to see. Then again, I might just be uh, a little wistful right now because my daughter is just about to start middle school. And I, I just, I look back at all the, all the pictures that we had together when she was younger and it just, man, I'm not ready. You know, she's growing up too fast. You're growing up too fast, baby girl. Now, they did something here, and really, if you look at this floor plan, it, it physically looks a lot like a toy hauler. You've got that big, big front power awning, plus a separate rear power awning, but not over the kitchen slide. All the slides, by the way, are slide awning prepped, so that's not a big concern. And one of the things I kind of like they did here, the way that this floor plan works out, they don't need to burn belly space up here for an outside kitchen. Instead, you just get this huge like double pass through mega basement space in here it's so big they had to put center supports in it to make sure the bedroom and bathroom deck wouldn't collapse 
You see, you've got uh, you know double magnet uh, holdbacks, double slam latches, drunken uncle leash latch down below. And heck, if I tie one on and you lock me out, I could just crawl in here and I could sleep it off for the night. That being said, tying one on and then tying me onto the RV only requires about two Coors lights. I am the lightest of lightweights. You see the TV hookups over there. You can run those outside of this little port and not have to leave your bag of yours dangling wide open. Another thing I really like on these, like, the uh, the way that they do their doors and stair treatments, they're very consistent. They just use one set of hardware. Um, it, it's not every manufacturer, but some manufacturers, they'll use the nice door and the nice steps on your main living room door. But then when you get back to your like bunk room or bathroom, you kind of get the scaled down cheaper versions. Both of these have fold out steps. They're both the, the, the view through and vis -a view, whatever you want to call them, entry doors. Um, they both have the uh, the smexy glass fronts on those, although I've been advised by my southern clients, you get down south and those things get a little bit hot to the touch. That being said, I don't know that I'm playing pat a cake with my uh, entry doors glass front, but like I get what they're saying. It, it generates some heat. Um, again, that direct entry door does have a deadbolt, so it ain't like you gotta worry about putting on a free show for the neighbors unless you're at the clothing optional resorts, in which case, by the way, um, <laughs> we don't judge. Halo RV, come do your business. We don't care what you do in your private time. Now, the uh, outside door right here, just to give you a reference point, kind of like we did inside, I can stand under that thing without clocking my head. That's a no noggin knocker right there, and um, <sighs> this camp kitchen. So you've got the propane cooker hooker right down below. And I actually kind of like that they don't force you into like uh, a little two burner stove or, or a grill or something like that. They let you pick your own adventure and there's enough belly space in this for storage, but it's all galvanized rolled steel. You've got a real sink with a real drain right there. Uh, you've got the, uh, the second refrigerator outdoors. Plus you've got the little ice maker over here. Now there have been times where this model has been built without the ice maker and with a giant like double door refrigerator freezer. What we're seeing right here is a more traditional uh, arrangement. And um, what's kind of happening a little bit is there's been some supply challenges within the RV industry. So it is absolutely possible that we have a 22 Arctic Wolf 3770 in stock at Halet RV um, with a giant double door uh, uh, refrigerator freezer outside. It's also very possible, like we're seeing right here, that we'll get some with a more traditional, like dorm style fridge with the ice maker. Either way, it, it kind of evens out and it works out. I just want you to be proactively aware that the challenges from the last year, year and a half, they're not done. They're still continuing, unfortunately. And whether you're buying from Halet RV or if you're just watching our videos uh, from say like California or Florida or something like that, to just learn about something that you might have seen locally, I want you to get the most information possible so that you have the best expectations set possible. Uh, up top, we've got the LCI Insight Bluetooth camera. These are factory prepped for a ladder, but for various reasons, Cher the entire Cherokee group and frankly, most of Forest River have stopped offering factory ladders. Now, if that's something you really need, we could add one here after market. Basically, we just call Arctic Wolf, say, send me a schematic, tell me where the, um, you know, the, the stuff is, the, 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 the mounts out uh, in that wall are, and we can mount one. And sometimes it's simple, but just a little light down here in this extra baggage compartment, like this thing has a huge belly up front, plus you've got the good storage going on right here. And notice once again, the consistency. Even this is slam latches and magnet catches. Everything's just simple and easy. Well, you know, I say that. I always try to be fair. Not totally necessarily everything because of the way the kitchen, the middle uh, or the, the rear bath uh, there and the front bath are arranged. You've got one set of uh, dump outlets behind the tires and one set up here in front of the tires. That is just, uh, like if Arctic Wolf had their choice, they would cross pipe everything and, and hook it all together. But in that heated underbelly, there's just not quite enough vertical space to allow for proper runoff from like, you know, to, to, to make the tanks cross pump into one another effectively. So it does have two separate outlets right there. Now there's all kinds of things you can do like Y splitters or you can just unhook and rehook and then, you know, pull your valves open or whatever. There's, there's ways around it. Some people really get annoyed by that. Some people are like, ah, oh, well, you know, that's just what, what happens when you get a, a big floor plan like this that's kind of, you know, wacky in its stuff. I just wanna make sure you're aware of everything that's happening. 
Now, the, uh, with no ladder, I can't really get you up to the roof, so you can't really see the double Coleman Mach AC units, nor can you see uh, the Cherokee Juice Pack that we like to option onto these. It's a simple solar package. It's a good battery tender package, but the Juice Pack has been running the lights, the awnings, the slides, everything I've done today, and has been able to meet, if not exceed the demands that I'm throwing at it. That being said, I am not running the refrigerator, which will be able to overpower that thing. It's It's... A dry camp extension package, it's a basic battery tending storage package. It's not a, you're gonna run your air conditioner in the middle of, well, the Halo RV parking lot kind of package. Again, trying to set those good expectations. So again, you've heard it all from me, and now it's my turn to hear it from you. What do you guys think about this one? If you've made it this far with me, please uh, do me a favor, like our video if you haven't, subscribe if you haven't, and leave me some comments and let me know what you think about this beast. Again, the only thing it's not is small, I've showed you what I think are the highs and the lows of it. Overall, I think this is just a monster RV. I don't care if you're planning on towing around and using it as a bunkhouse, or if you're gonna use it as like a work destination camper, if you're gonna use it as a, a mobile crew sort of camper, or if you're just gonna leave it parked by the lake at like a seasonal site and use it like a park model. I think it works for any and all of that very, very well. So when you're ready, give us a call at Halet RV. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet camping, everyone.